Hello, my name is Eve. I'm a 3D artist and illustrator, and today I'll be showing you the process of me getting ready for my first artist alley. I'll show you everything that I did to prepare from planning, ordering products, packaging everything, and everything that I had to set up in order to be able to table at my first artist alley. I hope this video is useful for those of you who are looking to table for the first time, or maybe you'll just enjoy it if you like watching artist vlogs. Okay, let's get into the video. Before applying to any conventions, I made a big list of things that I need to make and buy in order to participate in my first convention. So I made a list of the art that I need to make, a list of the things that I need to buy, and a list of manufacturers that could do everything that I wanted to. Also, at this point, I still don't really know what to expect from my first convention, so I ordered very little of each item because I didn't want to overstock and overspend. So I've ordered around 10 items of each design, and I have 14 pin designs, I think around 8 keychain designs, and 5 or 6 print designs. So quite a few months before the event, I made all of the designs that I wanted to get printed. So I made some sticker designs, some sticker sheet designs, some prints, some keychains, and some pins. The stickers I ordered well in advance because I wasn't sure on the manufacturer that I chose. I used a new manufacturer that is UK based that I hadn't used before, and I was kind of worried about the quality of the stickers, but they turned out very, very good. I'm really happy that all worked out because I kind of took a gamble on this manufacturer, but they over delivered, to be honest. At the moment, I don't have the ability to produce my own stickers because the equipment is quite expensive. But maybe in the future, if I decide I want to do more conventions, I'll look into investing in a printer and a cutting machine. As you see shortly, throughout the two months before the convention, I kept getting deliveries very often. I slowly but surely built up a small inventory of products, and by ordering them well in advance, I just spread out the cost a bit more. The cringe sticker is my favorite from all of my stickers. I relate to it on a spiritual level. <laughs> One thing I didn't realize is how much admin you have to do when you run your own business, which sounds obvious when I say it now, but when I got the orders in, I have to count how many of each individual sticker I have, keep an inventory, then also I'll have to keep track when I sell them at the event. So it's a lot of admin that is kind of behind the scenes that I didn't really think about. Keeping a nice tidy spreadsheet of everything really helps though. I keep a spreadsheet of all of my sticker ideas, then what stage they're in, if I've ordered them, already drawn them, and then eventually how many of them I have. It really helps when you're first starting out, so I would really recommend it if you want to keep your sanity. <laughs> Once I was sure I was happy with the quality of this UK sticker manufacturer, I ordered some more stickers from them as well as sticker sheets. I made six sticker sheet designs and another five die cut stickers. Like before, I count to see how many of each item I have and then I fill out that info in my little spreadsheet. Here is a closer look of everything I made. I made this Ghibli or Ghibli, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, sticker sheet. I also made an Avatar The Last Airbender one. This one is a Cats with Hats original sticker sheet. The next one I made is this Pokemon one. As you can probably tell, I really love making sets of things. It just really pleases that part of my brain that likes it when things go together. So yeah, as I mentioned before, I got all of these sticker sheets from the same company I got the die cut stickers from. Their quality is honestly so, so amazing. Initially, before I found the company, I was convinced that I wouldn't be able to make sticker sheets because they were so expensive everywhere I looked. But these guys were reasonably priced on top of the quality being amazing, so I'm very happy that worked out. Today I received a very exciting order from overseas. I ordered some pins and keychains which finally arrived after a few months of me waiting for them nervously. <laughs> The thing with getting things manufactured externally is that you have no control outside of the artwork, so you just send something off and you just hope that it works out. 
So yeah, once you send it off, it's completely out of your control. The colors might be wrong, the design might be done wrong. So it's just kind of stressful to just release that control over your work. But I'm honestly so happy with how everything turned out. I was most nervous for the pins actually, because I saw in one of the product reviews, some people had smudging on the printed pins. But thankfully none of mine had that and the results were very vibrant and very crisp. I had 5 keychain designs and 14 pin designs made. I actually really love the wood grain on them and how textured they feel when you hold them. They are also slightly shiny as you can see on this little wizard frog pin. One problem I did have though is that the keychains printed a bit different from the original artwork. So the colors are slightly different and a bit more faded. Honestly, I think that is probably my fault because I didn't convert the files to CMYK before sending to the printers, but that's, you know, nothing to be too upset about. This Gigi keychain is my favorite out of the whole lot. He's just too cute. The next three keychains I made are these little milk boxes, which are also a part of a set. So we have the froggy strawberry milk, we have the monkey banana milk, and finally we have the red panda orange milk. Okay, so it's around three weeks or a little bit more before the convention, and I got an exciting package today. It's something a little bit different, it's business cards. I really like that you can easily scan the code on the back of my business cards for all of my links. I think that makes it super quick to find me online, which is always good. Since I'm completely new to tabling at events, I was really surprised to find out just how much promotional material you need to make. Obviously you don't need to have everything the first time you table, but I just thought it would be nice to have a sort of brand presence, I guess and to have everything look a bit more cohesive. That's why I got a banner, some business cards, and all of my packaging also has the same color scheme. So yeah, I'm just trying to build a brand color scheme and a brand cohesiveness in a way. I don't know if that's a word, cohesiveness? Yes? Anyway, I think having these cohesive colors on your business cards and all of your packaging really helps people distinguish when you attend events. So when they see a certain color, they just associate it with you and it just makes everything more presentable. Because of that, another thing I decided to invest in was a banner for my stall. I measured before I ordered it, but it honestly came out so much bigger than I thought it was going to be. So I don't really know how we're going to place it on the stall, but I guess we'll figure that out when it comes to it. It's a new day and it's a new package in the mail. Today I got my backing cards for the pins and keychains. I ordered these backing cards in A7 size so they could fit both the keychains and the pins. I really really like how they turned out and I think they make all my products seem a lot more cohesive. I've said cohesive in this video more times than I ever have in my life and I still don't really know if it's the right term to use, but anyway. Here I'm just putting all of the pins on backing cards. Here's a closer look of all 14 pin designs that I made for the convention. I made three sets all together, one is Pokemon, one is Froggies and one is Cats with Hats. I'm really really happy with how they look on the backing cards and how professional that makes everything look. At this stage I wasn't sure if I wanted to add a plastic sleeve to the pins or not. The packaging I bought is biodegradable and compostable so it's not terrible for the environment but I just wasn't sure if I liked how it looked. In the end, I asked my followers on Instagram and everyone voted for the sleeves. So I did include them. Hi guys, it is a new day today. I had some prints arrive in the mail, which is very cool, and I just wanted to share them with you. Sadly, the colors turned out a bit different than what I want them to, but that's fine for now. 
Here is a closer look of all the prints I made for the event. I made mostly original prints as well as two fan art prints. The original prints are of these little animals with their own small businesses. I thought that was just a really cute idea to make considering that I have my own small business. The fan art prints are of Animal Crossing and Pokemon. I made these little isometric islands with all of the characters on them. I had a lot of fun with these. So this is a stage when I started packaging everything. I put all 140 pins on backing cards and then I put all of them in sleeves. I found out that it's a lot of unseen labour that gets put into everything to make everything look the best it can at the convention. You actually don't realise how much effort everything is until you do it yourself, but ultimately I think it's worth it. The cards and packaging make everything come together, so I am glad I did it. After I finish packaging the pins, I store them upright in a box with dividers. I find that makes them easy to organise and store. For the prints, I am glad that I used the biodegradable sleeves. I find that they protect the paper really well and I have some prints that are outside of the packaging that have actually gotten damaged in the corners. So in this case I'll definitely continue using the biodegradable sleeves for the prints. After I package all the prints, I store them in this expanding folder. I really love this thing. It can store so much stuff even though it doesn't look like it from the outside, but I ended up storing 6 print designs and I have another 8 Gizmonos designs and I store 10 of each print, so that's hundreds of prints inside. It's like never ending, <laughs> but it has a lot of storage and I definitely recommend using it if you also go to conventions. Here you can see a bit of how I package my keychains. I peeled off the protective foil that they come with because that makes them appear a bit scratched and I don't want the customers to think that I'm selling them scratched merchandise. After I peel the foil off of the keychains, I put them on backing cards by making some holes on the cards and then tying a bit of string to the keychain. In the end, I put all of the keychains in the same protective sleeves as the pins. For the keychains, I definitely think it's worth using the protective sleeves as well. This way they won't get scratched at all. And with that, everything is packaged and ready for the con. Hi guys, it is the 17th of June today, so there's still around 3 weeks left until the event, so there's still plenty of time to sort things out. But I just wanted to show you what came in the mail today because it's really exciting. I've already opened it because I have no patience, but I still thought it would be good to see. So this is my square reader that came in the mail today for the event. So you open the box here and you got your instructions and you have a little sticker here to show that you take square payments at the event. Then you have this cable here to use it for charging. And you have the square reader that is actually quite small. I thought it would be bigger, but it's quite handy that it's this small. So for those of you that don't know, this in a phone is all that you need to take contactless payments at events. And I didn't know that, but it's quite handy that it's just this small and this handy. So you can tap to do contactless or you can insert a card through here. And yeah, that's all you need. It's really, really handy. I'll also show you how the app works because it's really convenient. So this is the app. It's really handy because you can do some presets here. So I have some for my stickers, for my sticker sheets and my prints. So you can click to add these to the basket. So let's say we have four stickers added. You can just press here and check out 
or what you can also do is you can apply some discounts so for example I have a buy free get one free which is kind of a mouthful but <laughs> buy free get one free on stickers so if I add that I click on it to add it you can see now that it adds the discount here so one of the stickers comes free so that's quite handy and it makes everything very intuitive to you so if you want to add a keychain or a pin it just adds it to your total so it's very intuitive to use and it's very handy and I think it's going to save me a lot of time and a lot of stress. So it is half past midnight on the 19th of June and I just built this because I got a sudden moment of inspiration. Yeah, it's a very DIY table setup that I'll continue tomorrow, I guess, but it is. Literally on my sofa, there is a tabletop on top of my sofa because I don't have a table big enough. Um, that it needs to be one meter eighty, so six foot, and uh, I don't have a table big enough, so I DIY'd it. <laughs> um, so the width needs to be sixty centimeters here, so it's where the tablecloth ends. And uh, yeah, I just did a little test set up tomorrow I'll start putting out the product but so far so good this is the banner that I had made I initially wanted to put it up there but I just didn't realize how big it's gonna be so it's gonna have to be on the front of the booth and then I'm gonna have to figure out something else on top of the booth to have my branding on there but uh, I guess we'll figure that out when we come to it okay so it's a new day today today I'm putting everything together I'm thinking of doing this side on the right here as Gizmo and Oz stuff and this side for my original artwork as well as keychains and pins and the center I think I'm going to have my sticker sheets on the back and my stickers on the front and yeah I think that's about it I think I might also put some sticker boards so you can see the stickers displayed but I'm not sure yet that is the plan for now for up here I'm gonna have to order another banner that is shorter than this one so it's gonna have to be just the width of one of those cubes so I think that's 30 centimeters by 150 centimeters so I'm just gonna order another banner so I can have the top and bottom here I think that will be really nice but yeah let's get started I'll put you on the tripod and you can see the progress At this stage you can see that I've realized that I've done the grid cubes wrong and you can visibly see my confusion here. Alright so what essentially I have to do now is just rebuild the whole thing because I built it wrong initially. So if you can see I've placed the little thingies, they're not supposed to go like that. They're supposed to be laying down like this and everything here is supposed to be the flat side towards you so you can put flat things up the front so yeah maybe it wasn't a good idea to build anything at midnight uh, that might have uh, been my first sign to stop <laughs> but anyway I'll rebuild them now and hopefully it works out here after I rebuilt everything I started putting the prints back on I ended up having to do a base cube on each side and then connected the other grids to those. This way the prints can lay flat on the front. On this left side I'm working on now I'll have all of my original art and the fan art. So I'll put the prints on the top and then below that I'll put my pins and some keychains. I got these really handy hanging tags off of Amazon which I attached to the pin packaging. That way the pins can be hung on some hooks and can be displayed easily. Here I'm just trying to figure out a layout of the pins that I like. I keep rearranging everything until I find something that I like. Since I made 14 designs that was quite a lot to fit on but I figured it out in the end. Here in the front I put this little stand. 
I hung some keychains on it so customers can see and touch the keychains. I've heard that having your customers be able to actually touch your products really helps with sales, so I hope it helps. Finally, I arranged the sticker sheets, the stickers and business cards on the table. And with that, most of the table is done. So this is the final test setup. Since it is the first time I put this together, I had to redo the grid cubes because as you saw, I didn't know how to put them together. But overall, I think it's looking pretty good. I have my stickers in the middle here. Then I have my sticker sheets, my original prints on the left, and then Gizmo and Oz prints on the right here. Here I'm gonna have some posters and some of the Gizmo and Oz concept art. Then here I have a sign. I have two of these. I wanted to put one on each side, but I'm not gonna have any space. So this is the only one that I'm gonna be able to fit in. And this is going to have all my social links everywhere you can find me online. We have some business cards. Then here on the left, we have my original prints, all of my pins. So we have the Pokemon ones, the frog ones, the little cat ones. Then we have the keychains here. And here we have the keychains displayed. They're just little sample ones so people can just grab them and see them and see if they're double-sided, single-sided and just kind of see what they are like to hold. So I think that would be nice for people to just see the product up close. Makes it more fun to look at as well. Here I'm going to have all my stickers displayed so people can see them up on a sticker board. I'm going to have the price sheet coming up, coming outside like this here. And yeah, on top here I'm going to get another banner with just my handle, just so it frames everything nicely. So I'm going to have this one on the bottom. It's going to have to be attached a bit better than this, but you know. This one on the bottom, then the top one is just going to say Eve Paints. And yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. I might move these one up so they can just match the other prints and then figure out how to fill that gap down there but yeah i think it's looking pretty good so far happy with it for a first time it's not bad i did have to reassemble the whole thing two times but you know so what i ended up doing here is i made some mystery bags because i wanted to have them on the table anyway and i think this is the perfect spot for them so i'm going to leave this little cube like this I'm gonna have my sign on the right here with my links and then I've moved my business cards to the other end. But yeah, I think it, Whoa, I keep tripping because everything's a mess. But yeah, I think this is quite close to what the final setup is going to be. I'm fairly happy with it. I just need to Photoshop the signs and just to see if I like their placement and stuff. But it's looking good so far. I'm very excited now. I'll try to film at the event as well so you can see what the final setup is going to look like but for now I think this is all I can do. Now I have to disassemble and <laughs> collect everything that I've made a mess out of. Here I'm just taking down everything from the test setup. Luckily it's much faster to put all the stuff away than it is to set up. I really like these boxes that I got from a brand called Really Useful Box. I really recommend them if you're able to get hold of them, especially the ones with the dividers in them. They're really handy to store my pins and to organize everything. And with everything prepped and packed away, it's time to set up at the convention. The setup day was a day before the convention. Sadly, I didn't get a lot of footage from us setting up at the convention because I was really frazzled and nervous about getting there. Thankfully, my boyfriend was able to help me carry everything there and also helped me assemble the grid cubes and attach the banners, which was a lot of help. After that, I just finished setting up on my own and arranged everything myself. The next day it was finally the first day of the convention. On the Friday there was quite a big queue waiting to get inside as you can see here. You can see them running to get autographs from the celebrities. Sadly I wasn't able to get much footage throughout the three days because I was really focused on not messing up. But I'll tell you all about it after the convention. For now enjoy this photo of me from the con and a photo of little artist Eve. I like to think that little Eve would be proud of me and would be happy that I continued with my art. 
It feels really surreal that I continued being an artist since I was little and now I make my money that way. It's just mad to think about. Day 2 of London filming Comic Con was a Saturday and was by far the busiest day. You can see the difference with Friday by how big the crowd is this time. Day 3, Sunday, was also quite busy, but not as busy as Saturday. Throughout the three days, there were some really cool cosplays as well, like these. Hello, welcome to the end of the video. So it's been around a week from the event now, and now that it's over and done with, I can give my impressions and tell you about how everything went. So the event was three days long, it was the Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Friday was the least busy day, Saturday was the busiest day and Sunday was busy but people weren't shopping very much. For me personally, Saturday was the best day sales wise and I think that's pretty standard with three day events. Sunday was the day that I didn't do the best sales wise. I think the majority of the people that go to this event are there to get autographs done because they do autographs by celebrities and they're not so much there to get merchandise or CR Estali. So I think that was a big factor in everyone not doing so well sales wise. A bunch of the other artists that were there also said that this year wasn't as good as the same event was last year and I think this might be because of the current economic situation with everyone. Uh, not wanting to spend so much money, which is, you know, understandable. Overall, my expenses were around £200, so that was £175 for the table and a helper, and the rest of it was travel and just miscellaneous expenses. I did make that money back, but I didn't make too much of a profit on top, which was kind of disappointing. But I think overall, I'm very glad I still did this event because everyone there was so, so nice. My booth neighbors on both sides were very sweet. And also I made some artist friends. I met some people that I know from online and they were very sweet. It's just overall a very pleasant experience. Everyone was very friendly. I was very nervous before I went because I had imposter syndrome. I thought everyone would just be friends and they would know each other and I would just be kind of an outsider but it was very nice and very welcoming so that's why i have a really great impression of this event and i would definitely do it again just because of the people also the people that did stop at my booth were very complimentary and everyone said that my art is very cute and they really liked it some people even laughed at my stickers which is the reaction that i want and yeah i would rate it a 7 out of 10 just because i didn't make as much profit as I wanted to but everyone was really nice so that made up for it. Also the fact that this event was quieter than other bigger ones was a nice introduction into how everything is done at these conventions because I think if my first event was something big like MCM I would have just been very frazzled and not know what to do so this was a nice introduction as my first con. The next convention I've applied to is MCM Comic Con and I get a response for that in August August. I hope I make it in but it is a very competitive convention thousands of artists apply so I'm not sure if I'll get in but fingers crossed I do and then maybe I can film that as well anyway thank you for watching this video if you enjoy my videos please consider liking and subscribing so you can see my future videos as well thank you for watching until next time